And that potential worker strike could happen as soon as tomorrow morning. Contract negotiations have been going on for months and workers say it's been long enough. Catherine Cook is live in the newsroom with the latest on the strike deadline and demands. Catherine Laurel, the deadline is 6 a.m. Tomorrow, if Kroger and the union haven't reached an agreement by then, workers in Oregon and Southwest Washington will strike. Union reps tell us they are not budging on that, but will keep bargaining as long as they can. Thursday night at the Hollywood Fred Meyer in Northeast Portland. As customers load up groceries, many know that in a matter of hours, employees at Fred Meyer and QFC stores could walk off the job and strike. And if that's something they believe in, then go for it. Stay diligent, you know, stay resilient for surely and um, stay positive. Union members authorized a strike December 11th. That's five months after negotiations with parent company Kroger began. The strike deadline is 6 a.m. on Friday. If we reach a deal, reach a deal. I mean, it could be and it could be at 5 a.m. You know, we're not walking away from this table. Miles Ashaya is spokesman for the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 555, the union representing employees. Members have had enough. I mean, this is, you know, they've been told they are essential throughout this entire thing and they're not treated that way. And, you know, now's now's the right time. These workers deserve to be compensated better for the record profits they bring in their company. Ishaya says workers in Fred Meyer and QFC's home and combination checkout departments are underpaid. Another grievance? He says Kroger is withholding information from the union on what those workers are actually making. The employer is not providing us with the information to prove or disprove that, and thus we cannot continue with the grievance process, and also it's really hard to negotiate a contract when the information that you are entitled to is not being provided. In response to that claim, a Fred Meyer spokesperson tells KGW, quote, our company intends to follow all local labor laws and legal requirements. Representatives for both Fred Meyer and QFC also told the Mercury, quote, we have proposed wage increases for our respective 555 associates, affordable health care benefits, stabilized retirement pension benefits, as well as safety measures to help ensure a safe working environment for our associates. Should it come down to a strike, it's clear Fred Meyer intends to stay open. They're posting multiple job advertisements online and outside stores, the signs are everywhere. $17 an hour, no experience necessary, willing to cross a picket line. That's something some customers tell us they wouldn't do. As a union member myself, um, we're taught to not cross picket lines, whether it's our strike or any other strike. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cross that picket. And it's our sincerest hope that the support we've given the community throughout this past pandemic is you know, reflected upon us because we need your support. Do not cross our line if we put a strike up. A Fred Meyer spokesperson tells us they want a fair and balanced outcome. They also want to keep providing the community access to food and essential items and will do everything they legally can to do that. Laurel. We'll see what happens in the morning. Thank you, Catherine. Also developing tonight, local schools are warning parents about a nationwide trend that's leading to threats against schools. Specifically, the messages are threatening violence at schools tomorrow. This appears to be tied to a trend on the social media app TikTok. The threats have largely been deemed not credible, but some schools are planning to increase security for tomorrow. Portland Public Schools sent a letter to parents and students today saying it has investigated threats made on social media and found them to be not credible. It is unclear if a threat at Lake Oswego High School and Middle School today was related to this trend. As a precaution, the schools went into lockdown and police sent about 50 officers to search the buildings before giving the all clear. It's not, uh, it's not over, and I think maybe if you had asked me a year ago, I thought we were coming out of it. We were in the tail end. Today marked one year since the COVID vaccine became available to Oregonians. Everyone hoped we wouldn't be talking about a new variant 12 months later. But as Keeley Chalmers reports now, healthcare workers are thankful for the vaccine and now pushing for everyone eligible to get boosted. It was a big <laughs> monumentous day. It was a day um, Dr. Ryan Thrower will never forget. I think we were all at a point where we couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that was kind of our first glimmer of, of light or hope. 
On December 16th of last year, Dr. Thrower gave her first COVID-19 vaccine during Governor Kate Brown's press conference. Thrower was the first dental resident in the United States to administer a COVID-19 vaccine. It was a historic moment. It was a busy day and I can't believe it's already been a year. Ryan Gooden was also at that press conference. His team with Legacy Health also administering the shots. For him, it was a day of celebration. Giving the first week a year ago of getting those shots was was immensely powerful and 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 as a source of pride for me in, in my career. But Gooden admits that celebration was a bit premature. He says where we are now was not where we thought we'd be a year ago, despite the 1.8 million vaccine doses Legacy Health has given. We just in the U.S. have just hit 800,000 deaths from COVID. Um, Almost 800 of those deaths were children. Uh, and, and in Oregon, we've hit more than 5,500 deaths, uh, and five of those were children. There are staff in every hospital in the state that are, that are still really working hard to the point of exhaustion. Like Gooden, Dr. Thrower thought this past year so would have been question, different. Please. I do not unfortunately feel like we are where I thought we would be, but I do think we're taking steps in the right direction. As for what they see happening over the next year, these healthcare workers expect more variants will likely arise and COVID will likely stick around, sort of like the flu. But as long as we get vaccinated and stay proactive, even if we're tired of it, we'll stay on the right path. We have to keep with hand washing. We have to keep masking. In healthcare, we're sick of masking too, believe me. We have to wear the mask all the time, um, but, but really it's, it's critically important. And doctors say getting vaccinated and boosted when you can is still the best thing you can do to protect yourself. If you're looking for where to get your vaccine or booster, we have a helpful resource on KGW.com. Just text the word booster to 503-226-5088 and we will send you a link directly to that information. So how far has Oregon come in vaccinating the population? For adults, those 18 and over, just under 80% have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. 73.5% finished the initial series. Another 27.8% have gotten a third dose or booster. A doctor we spoke with at Kaiser Permanente says, we're going to see more and more breakthrough cases of COVID unless more people get the booster. Booster doses are often needed, and that's a standard of, of routine immunizations. And so I don't, I think of this as success of our vaccines. It's not that somehow they're failing us. This is what we would expect, that you need that ad additional push to, to really um, provide that enhanced protection. New numbers today from the Oregon Health Authority show 30% of all COVID cases are breakthrough cases, meaning people who were vaccinated. About four and a half percent of those people have ended up in the hospital. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, all Clark County school districts are putting a pause on wrestling activities. It comes after 80 to 90 cases of COVID were linked back to a high school wrestling tournament in Washington earlier this month. Vancouver Public Schools said there have been no reported cases among its students, though several were identified as close contacts. Public health officials recommended the pause. Schools will reevaluate after the new year. Late tonight, police arrested a man they say killed two people in Tiger today. The victims were found dead at an apartment complex near Greenberg Road and 95th Avenue. U.S. Marshals tracked down the suspect, Ronald Stevens, in Sandy tonight. Investigators say he was known to the victims and this was not a random act. A grand jury today indicted two people for several car break-ins in St. Helens. Late last month, someone broke into more than a dozen vehicles in five different neighborhoods in the city. At least two cars were also stolen. The 18 and 27 year old suspects are from Portland and maybe just two of those responsible. Witnesses reported seeing five suspects involved. Police are still investigating.